Uh, thank you all for being here this afternoon. I'm Lindsay Schrader, the PIO uh, Public Information Officer of Bashop County. Um, first, I would like to acknowledge, acknowledge some of the local officials and community leaders that are in the room here today. Uh, we have uh, Connie Schrader, Mayor of Bastrop. Um, we have Scott Saunders, Jr., Mayor of Smithville. Um, Chris Cannon, Mayor of Elgin. Robert Campbell, City Manager of Smithville. Um, and we have Dr. Walks and Judge Poppy. Uh, we also have Christine Files, Emergency Management Coordinator. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce Dr. Walks to the podium, and then Judge Poppy will follow. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Um, I am the, the uh, my name is Dr. Desmar Walks, and I'm the local health authority for Bastrop County. Ever since the world learned of a new virus that causes significant respiratory illness, we knew that we would face serious challenges to try to control it. The coronavirus, or COVID-19, has spread infection, illness, and death around the globe in just a few months. Locally, there are confirmed cases next door in Travis County and in other nearby Texas counties. We are quite certain that the virus is here and circulating in Bastrop County if left to freely transmit throughout the county, we could rapidly outstrip hospital and healthcare capacity in our county. Steps to control the virus are limited because we have no vaccine and no antiviral medications. We are left with non-pharmaceutical interventions to slow the spread of the new COVID-19. We'd like to flatten the curve. Community mitigation strategies such as isolating the sick, home quarantining the exposed, canceling mass gatherings, and social distancing have worked to tamp down the height of the epidemic wave and therefore have kept health care systems functioning. This has been demonstrated in China, Singapore, South Korea, and Japan. However, these, for these measures to be effect, in a, effective, they need to be vigorously implemented several weeks before our hospitals get overwhelmed. Therefore, in order to preserve our medical abilities to care for those who become ill, the medical operations team for Bastrop County recommends to the full Bastrop Emergency Medi Management Committee that emergency declarations prohibiting congregation of more than 50 individuals be instituted. Further, regarding groups of less than 50, we strongly recommend that such groups also um, be uh, postponed until further notice. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wilkes. <clears throat> There'll be time for questions uh, after the press conference, and so uh, you may have something that you'd like to ask Dr. Wilkes, and we'll, we'll take care of that in just a moment. I want to add, uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody for being here, all of these uh, officials and representatives uh, who are standing with me and behind me in this matter, and then all of you here who are helping us get the message out and to alert um, uh, our citizens and uh, uh, the people of Central, Bast uh, Central Texas uh, how important this matter is and how critical it is that we get it right. I have a statement that I've been asked to read from the uh, school districts, uh, Astrop, ISD, Smithfield, ISD, Elgin ISD, and McDade as well. The superintendents uh, have all uh, written this statement together. As part of the Bastrop County Emergency Management Protocols, today we met with all the school district superintendents to develop a comprehensive plan that includes suspending school for two weeks following spring break. All districts are united in working together to help Bastrop County and all of our collective cities do what is in the best interest of public health. The superintendents and their teams uh, are working on plans for providing instructional content and meals during this additional closure. The community is encouraged to stay up to date using the website of Bastrop, Elgin, McDade, and Smithfield ISDs, as well as their social media channels. The schools will continue to communicate with staff and families as news and information comes to light. And then I have a resolution 
to read on behalf of Bastrop County and all of the local officials within Bastrop County, and that's why I'm very pleased to have Mayor Schrader here with me today, uh, Mayor Cannon from Elgin, and Mayor Saunders from uh, Smithfield. Whereas in December 2019, a novel, a novel coronavirus, now designated as COVID-19, was detected in Wuhan, China, and is recognized globally as a contagious respiratory virus. And whereas in March 2011, 2020, the World Health Organization Director General declared COVID-19 a pandemic, referring, uh, referencing over 133 countries and territories around the world with the sustained risk of further global spread. And whereas on March 13, 2020, uh, Governor uh, Greg Abbott declared a state of disaster in Texas due to this virus. Whereas according to the Centers of Disease Control, COVID-19 virus spreads between people who are in close contact and large gatherings of people pose an increased risk of spreading the infectious disease. And whereas the continued spread of COVID-19 presents an imminent threat of serious illness, and as the doctor said, risks overwhelming our Medicare uh, resources. And whereas action is required to take immediate steps to prepare for, respond to, and mitigate the spread of COVID-19 to protect the health and welfare, welfare of the residents of Bastrop County. Whereas other local governments in our immediate area have taken steps to limit the size of gatherings in uh, an effect to further address the threat and spread of COVID-19. Whereas Bastrop County is working collaboratively with the mayors of the cities of Bastrop, Elgin, and Smithfield, as well as local health authority, to see that all appropriate and necessary measures are taken to limit the spread of this infectious disease here in Bastrop County. Whereas a declaration of local disaster for public health emergency expedites our ability to take measures to reduce the possibility of exposure to the disease, control the risk, prevent and, and spread the, uh, prevent the spread of the disease, and to promote health and safety to all individuals in Bastrop County. Therefore, uh, it proclaimed by me, by Paul Poppy, Bastrop County Judge, by virtue of the authority vested in me as the presiding officer of the local body of Bastrop, governing body of Bastrop County, Texas, and under local government code section 418.108, I declare a local state of disaster within Bastrop County based on the threat posed by COVID-19. Be it also proclaimed that this state of disaster will continue until rescinded in accordance with the above cited statute including the requirement that within seven days after this declaration uh, for it to be continued or renewed or authorized, it will be authorized by the Bastrop County Commissioner's Court. Be it also proclaimed that this declaration activates the Bastrop County Emergency Management Plan with all other emergency statutory and uh, ordinances uh, and powers vested by the county judge or other local officials. It also uh, be proclaimed that pursuant to section 418.018D, of the local government code. This declaration activates the recovery and rehabilitation aspects of all applicable law and interjurisdictional emergency management plans and authorizes the furnishing of all aid and assistance under the administration of these plans. Be it also proclaimed pursuant to the authority granted by uh, to the county judge under Texas Disaster Act of 1975, authorize the use of all available resources of state government county government and the political subdivisions herein to assist the county in its response to this disaster and emergency. It is also proclaimed that pursuant to the Texas Government Code section 418.108G, the county judge may control ingress to and, uh, uh, and egress from uh, areas of disaster under its jurisdiction and the authority of the county judge to control the, move, the movement of the persons and the occupants of the premises of this area are hereby confirmed. Be it also proclaimed that under this order prohibit uh, that this order prohibits community gatherings of more than 50 persons anywhere in Bastrop County, continuing through the term of this disaster declaration, unless terminated or modified by me by written order. It is also proclaimed that violations per occurrence of this disaster act are punishable as a Class C misdemeanor. Um, uh, with a fine not to exceed normally $500, uh, 
but as authorized by the Texas Government Code, Section 418.173, and adopted by the County Emergency Management Plan by a fine of not to exceed $1,000, uh, or confinement in jail for up to 180 days, pursuant to Section 418.108C of the Texas Government showed this declaration of local government disaster shall be given prompt and general uh, publicity and shall be filed with the county clerk. Signed this today, the 16th day of March, 2020, effective at 4 o'clock p.m. So that is our order, and uh, you've, read, you've heard the doctor's statement, you've heard the statement from the school districts. We stand in solidarity here today because uh, we believe that uh, this is the only meaningful way to protect the citizens of Bastrop County's health and safety and to make an impact on the spread of this devastating virus in our uh, communities, in our state, in our country, and in the world. Based on that, I'd be pleased to try to answer questions or I'd call on someone standing here behind me and with me to answer those questions if there are any at this time. Anybody? Could you elaborate on the school district? I know you mentioned uh, social media being uh, a tool that some of the students will be able to use to like, stay updated as they're out for the next couple of weeks. Yes, um, Is there a long-term plan afterwards when it comes to school testing and state testing? Uh, I, I can't speak to the to the plan for uh, state testing requirements, although I know that the superintendents, by their own uh, testimony to me, are in touch with TEA and they're looking at the options. I'm sure the Texas Education Association is concerned about um, about uh, the million, uh, the millions of students in the state of Texas, including those here in Bastrop County. Details will be developed as time goes by. Uh, the dismissing of classes for an additional two weeks beyond the week of spring break is simply a measure to uh, implement social uh, distancing uh, so that uh, the, the kids are less likely themselves to be infected and are less likely to spread that infection to those whom they love the most, their parents and grandparents and other family members. So I don't have the details. Uh, the, uh, each school district does have a website and an active uh, Facebook page, so anyone interested in the details should uh, monitor those uh, social media platforms. Anybody else? Um, for anyone who wants to get tested, um, where can they access that within the county? Doctor, would you come and talk about the, uh, the protocol for anyone who requests to have a test? Currently, we have a specific criteria for testing that's passed down by the Department of State Health Services and is based on CDC criteria. There are labs that have been given emergency use um, clearance, and we are in the process of getting some of the test kits um, to places where those tests can be done. Um, we have not yet um, established where all of those centers are, and as to my knowledge, the um, process is still following the same criteria that the CDC put out. Did some of those centers end up being within the county? Yes. yes. Thank you. I might add from a, from a layman's standpoint that uh, there are not enough test kits to test all Americans. And so anyone who requests a test should request it through, through their primary care provider or through uh, a state agency uh, concerned about uh, public health. And uh, tests will only be administered to those who have a doctor's slip, a doctor's permission to take the test at this time. One more question? Yes, ma'am. Uh, just wanted some clarification on the class C misdemeanor. Um, just with the, the events or gatherings, yes. of 50 people or over. Yes, ma'am. Um, businesses included? Um, very good question. Um, the, the law allows us to bump an offense up to the next higher level under a disaster declaration in a county. So normally, violation of this ordinance would be a class C misdemeanor with a $500 fine. The next higher level would be a class B misdemeanor with a $1,000 fine. So that's the authority under which a county government can increase the fine. Uh, any violation of this order or any other uh, criminal order during this disaster declaration will be bumped up or may be bumped up to its next level. Now, concerning your, your question about, um, was it about enforcement? Businesses. Um, um, about in business. Was right. Yes. Um, we, we know that it's going to be difficult to, um, to monitor 
uh, every business and, and count noses as people enter and exit a business. What we're asking of the business owners is that they self-regulate to, the, to, to the ability that they have to do so because uh, of the principle that uh, uh, social distancing is the only way to prevent the uh, rapid spread of this disease. And so as responsible citizens of our county and uh, business owners, I would think that they would do, want to do all they can. Um, and we understand that there may be extenuating circumstances and there may be uh, uh, surges of people at one time or another, but um, generally we're going to expect businesses, churches, and all other organizations to honor our request that they not uh, assemble in groups of greater than 50 people. I will say this, that just today I heard uh, on one of the national networks that uh, President uh, Trump has requested that that number be lowered to 10. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, get your groceries while you can and, and take care of business while you can and be prepared to um, self-quarantine in your home. That's the safest place for you to be. Be prepared uh, to, uh, to stay out of public and, 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 and and, and out of any social interaction with others uh, for, the, for the time that it will take this, uh, this thing to be under control. Great question, thank you. Sure. Why did you guys settle on 50, uh, given that President Trump has said 10, others have said 25, 250, the numbers are all over the place. What determination led you guys to decide 50? Thank you, very good question. Uh, the mayors and I talked about it in, in conjunction with our health authorities' advice and consent, and um, uh, at the time that, uh, that we arrived at that number, CDC's published recommendation was 50. I will know, I do know that Caldwell County, for example, has approved an ordinance limiting uh, to 250, 250 people. But uh, the consensus of our group was that that's not enough control, uh, that, uh, that we need uh, a, a smaller group than that. And by the way, uh, the doctor will tell you more eloquently than I can, but the nature of a communicable disease is um, that uh, it's sort of like a pyramid. Uh, one touches two, two touch four, four touch 16, and then it just goes from there. So uh, breaking that touching, breaking that, uh, that connection is the only way to, to, to control a communicable disease. And that's, we, we, although the president's suggestion of 10 would certainly be better, um, that's going to be pretty hard to do and pretty hard to enforce. Uh, 50 is, I think, a reasonable compromise number, um, and uh, we, we just want people to take that number seriously and do what they can to, to limit exposure. As the doctor said in her statement, just because we're saying 50, that doesn't mean we want 50 people together every day all the time. Limit that number every time you can. Uh, be with as few people as possible uh, all the times that you can, because the fewer people you're with, the less likelihood you're going to be contacting the disease or that you're going to be sharing with someone else. Great question. Brandon? To what degree do you think it's going to impact the county or any cities economically? We're, we haven't made an analysis of that at, at this point. Um, because of the nature of, of county's business and, and the cities as well, we are, we're structured to handle individual requests. Um, you know, we, we can take care of people one or two at a time. And so, Court systems normally have larger calls than one or two at a time. If you come in to get a, a marriage certificate, that's you and, and your hubby and, and, and maybe your mom. But if, if you're called in for a jury trial, you may have a pool of 100 people. We are going to postpone any further jury calls until we get uh, control of the spread of this virus. Our, our district judges have already agreed to that. Now. Um, there are certain things under the penal code that allow that that we're allowed to do. Uh, some things can't be done. All mental health issues will be dealt with as they come up on a daily basis. Um, most of those, however, don't involve the largest groups of people. It might involve a, a few uh, consultants or advisors, but it won't enjoy, in, involve a jury. Um, so the, the answer is that from a public service standpoint, we can continue to provide the essential services that you need uh, without, without interruption. Uh, each of these local governments has prepared and has sharpened their continuity of operations plan uh, so that uh, they know who's second in charge and third in charge and fourth in charge. 
We've encouraged them to even cross-link so that uh, there's, uh, there is some sharing between community to community as the need might arise. We're committed to continuing to provide the water, wastewater, and uh, police services that are essential for, for uh, order society. We're not too concerned about the impacts right now uh, financially. Um, uh, we're concerned about getting people well and keeping people well and stopping the spread of the contagion of this virus. So uh, that's our focus right now. Did I say that right? <laughs> all right. We're, we're all on this together and, and we do count on each other. Anything else from anybody? We don't want to wait here too long. We do thank you for coming today to help us get the word out. I do want to announce <clears throat> just at, as we end here that uh, our emergency Office of Emergency Management is putting together a call center. It will be active at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Uh, we're thankful that it will be housed in the Bastrop City Library uh, away from the hubbub of the activity of this uh, operations center here. And so uh, that call center will be active tomorrow morning at 8. The phone number is this, 512-303-4300. That's 512-303-4300. Anybody can call that number in the morning after 8 and uh, can get answers to questions that they might have about uh, the, the virus, about how to deal with the virus, and what the uh, local governments are doing to, uh, to help their citizens. Yes, ma'am. Can we just clarify when we talk about groups so there's no misunderstanding that this is not just public groups but private groups as well of 50 or more? Yes, ma'am. It, it, it would be everybody because the virus doesn't know whether you're a public or private group. <laughs> uh, it just knows that there's a bunch of people together and it wants to jump from one to the other. Uh, and it does that, as the doctor will tell you and it has said, through this, this sharing of droplets, primarily through coughing or sneezing. But those droplets sometimes can fall on a hard surface and can survive for days, right, doctor? So touching a doorknob, I mean, it could, it could come in any, any form or fashion. And that's why our medical professionals are pretty sure that the virus is already in Bastrop County. It's just that we haven't tested for it yet. Uh, so be careful and, uh, and, and keep, keep your exposure down uh, by, by eliminating uh, uh, your social interaction with others. All right. Okay. I think that is it. Did anything else from anybody? Good. Thank you so much. Thank you all. I would shake your hands, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just do this. This is our new protocol for the county. You know, I'm such a hugger. I would hug them all if I could, but can't do that. So it's just elbow time here. <laughs> I've been poked by some of these people's elbows before. <laughs> But uh, in just a moment. All right, thanks a lot. Anything else? What date is that again until the schools are closed, It's uh, two additional weeks on top of uh, one week of... Uh, uh, Through Friday, April 3rd. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Through Friday. And, and that will, there will be further announcements as, as that date approaches. Yeah, we, we said it's April 5th, which is the Sunday following the, the Friday of April 3rd, but it's through two additional weeks. All right, thanks a lot, folks. By the way, we hope you like our new operations center here. This is wonderful. This is our first time to use it, and uh, it is all we'd ever hoped that it would be when we were planning it. So we're glad, uh, glad that we have this asset. <laughs>